everybody in case you want to start winning more games and risk to lose all of your non-existent friends this is the best opening for you now jokes aside i think the london system is one of the best openings that you can use especially if you're like an adult beginner and you're trying to avoid getting overwhelmed by the exorbitant amount of theory that relies on most of the other openings so in this video i'm gonna be walking you through my thinking process as an international master against uh, lower rated players and i'm gonna be playing three games showing uh, two of the most common openings that uh, players below 1500 go for and in the last game we're gonna be dealing with a very weird setup where I'm explaining how to try to sort of think it outside the box. But before we dive right into the action, I wanted to thank everyone who voted me for the Chesabal Awards. We managed to win course of the year 2022, which is absolutely mind-blowing definitely a dream that came true for me and in case you haven't picked up the course already you can now do it on a sale by using the link from the pinned comment so without further introduction let's just dive right into the games okay getting a new one I'm gonna be sticking with the little london system and this time we actually get to face something that is a little bit more normal i hope we'll see are we going to be able to just get a typical free London win? Hope so, but I guess we're about to find out. <laughs> what are the people playing Chigorin in this rating range? Come on, we need to have somebody playing Knight C6. That is like so common for this rating range. It has to happen. So let's see. Probably it's going to be Bishop F5, Copycat or E6. Oh, here it is, the Chigorin. So we start with E3. And now we can basically play bishop outside the pawn chain, g4, f5, or e6. Those are the most common moves that uh, I'm expecting. So it's bishop f5. Now, usually in the Chigorin with two knights, this is also explained in the course, uh, when they go for the bishop outside the pawn chain, the bishop b5 plan works really well. And you've got to really pay attention to the timing because a lot of people would just... Play c3. That is like a very common uh, mistake that I see in low rated games. They just play c3. They're like, oh, he's going to do the knight here. He's going to hurt me. He's going to do flight lever. I lose. I don't want that. No, don't worry about that. Just play bishop b5. So the point is on a6, we're going to take and play for double pawns. But a lot of uh, the black players will just go e6. And then you actually can get a close to winning position very quickly. Uh, with 95 um, and usually my students just get like a free win here after knight takes and then they pick up the rook I mean we already did that in the London rating climb a bunch of times so nothing new on a6 just take and uh, this is an interesting position because uh, I feel like for everybody a very natural move would be 95 which I think, uh, technically speaking, is reasonable, but the computer finds a very weird uh, kind of defensive idea by playing queen b8, which I don't think uh, your opponents will rely on this type of uh, sophisticated uh, idea, so 95 is very good, but just an idea that you want to keep in mind whenever it gets to double pawns, c4 becomes very cool. Preparing queen a4, and then... Uh, yeah, trying to take the pawn on c6. Triple pawns are obviously bad. That's like a pretty easy way to remember this. Uh, usually, uh, the people that I work with have a pretty rough time remembering c4, but they do play 95, which is still reasonable. And the nice thing about uh, c4 is that it's kind of giving you an easy win after queen a4. They're going to do queen d7, but then knight e5. And you'd be shocked how many games I've seen ending like that, both in our London rating climb and also in uh, some of my students' games. Um, yeah, just 95. Uh, it's like not even funny, not even fair. You, you just have to play no moves by yourself. Just remember like eight moves of theory, and this is how a lot of games in this rating range actually play out. So between... 800 to like 1200 this is very very common i would say the only tricky part is if he plays queen d6 that's leading to an interesting position where uh, a lot of people actually go wrong so 
Hopefully we'll get to show that on the board. However, I feel like opponent will just give up and play queen d8 or queen e7. Because they're usually afraid to step on the same diagonal with the bishop. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. On queen d6, it's just important not to rush and go for like, you know, the tempting move. Okay, we get that on the board. That is very cool. So I think you can basically, you know, every single one of you is wondering, like, can we go for knight takes on f7? That is like hitting queen and rook. But I mean, really, guys, you want to think about it like this. Let's say you're walking on the street and I don't know, you see like the hottest girl in your life and you make eye contact and you're like, oh, maybe this is the time. Maybe this is love of my life. I should introduce myself you'd think like that. Yeah, like, maybe, I don't know, we get in contact, make, like, a nice family with 10 babies. So you think, oh, let me go and I take F7, introduce myself. And you do that, and then you get hit by Queen B4, which is her fucking boyfriend. And then you just resign. Queen B4 is just absolutely crashing there. So don't do this mistake. But instead... <laughs> mm. Make sure boyfriend is not in town, and you play C5. So after this move, queen has to go back, and then uh, you're just going to get a winning position. I know. It's kind of hard to resist the temptation. But um, the queen has to leave, and then we're going to be able to go for this, which is just uh, winning. And you'd be amazed how often this actually happens for this rating range. It's just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> way too simple I mean it's almost like not even fair now they're gonna do knight d7 because okay they are afraid to move the king I mean some of them move the king but it's still like not helpful so yeah problem with knight d7 is that uh, the rook will remain undefended after takes pick that up so has to move king up and then okay he actually finds this move now what would be the most precise way? I have to say, this is kind of where my knowledge ends and I need to make a move by myself, which is usually, uh, yeah, not very good, but, uh, yeah, I assume we have, uh, we have a lot of tempting uh, candidates. I wonder whether bishop g5 is just kind of like zugzwanging him. Like, he almost has no moves. I don't know. I could just play like knight c3, just develop. Yeah, let's just develop. Cannot go wrong with development. Castling is fine too. But I'll just go with development. Now, from my experience, in the next like two or three moves, people just blunder like crazy because it's tough to play with the king on e7. So they would, I don't know, play queen d7, stuff like that. They will lose their mind, I'm telling you. Uh, we'll see whether that is actually true or not, but... Hopefully it is. <laughs> so, if opponent does not go for anything crazy, the important thing is not to like lose your uh, yeah composure, because a common mistake that I see in lower rated players make they see king on e7 and they're like, oh, I need to mate this guy. They simply like I don't know. It's like. Uh, mm, they cannot think of anything else. It's just uh, like an addiction. It's You need to get the checkmate right now. No, dude, relax. The king is on e7. It's lost the right of castling. The king is screwed. It's just there for like, you know, forever. You can think about it this way. So it's like black uh, took the wrong train. Now... You know, he's in the wrong train. If he just starts running in like the opposite direction, it's not like it's going to help him. So for whatever the trip takes, he's going to be fucked. Okay, he's in the wrong direction. That's the king on e7. It's a long-term weakness. Now, knowing this, this is not running anywhere. Okay, so why would you rush? No, you just play normal. You just know you have this little asset that he's always going to have a weak king. So... Yeah, I would love to show you how that would play out. But I feel like we just have a concrete idea to go queen a4 and then knight c6 is going to be hard to stop. 
So yeah, this is gonna do that specifically because he played rook b8 inviting this fork, which is gonna be pretty tricky to defend against. So I think we just go for a direct win right now. But I hope you guys get the point. So that is basically uh yeah, it sure he's got a weak king. If you don't see like an immediate mate, then just forget about it, okay? Just relax. King is weak. Only mistake you could do to rush. Just don't rush and uh yeah. Get the fork. Get the queen and uh save uh, yourself the pain. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see if opponent will uh, try to fight down a queen. I don't mind. It's just uh, to see whether how much they can take. <laughs> okay, opponent doesn't seem to be any, uh, you know, like he's still in very good fighting mood. I'm just gonna go like queen c6, I guess. Healing c7. It's not like he's got any threats. So I think we can do that. Only move to defend would be like 98. And then. Yeah, probably castle, I would say. Time to castle sooner or later. <laughs> No need to do anything special, really. Could have gone for taking this pawn as well, but at this point, when we're like up so much material, we're definitely, yeah, not in a rush to win more material. So, okay, opponent just resigns and we manage to win the game. Now, you guys may be wondering, okay, Alex, please, can you go back to that part where uh, you said boyfriend was in town because I personally didn't get it. Okay, I totally understand where that, where that is coming from, but let me be a little bit more specific. So, we go knight takes on f7, you're thinking, oh, that's a fork, best day of my life. But then queen b4, oh, that's a check. What is this forcing? It's forcing you to take. And then bishop takes on b4, check! Dude, you're in check, your hands are tied. You gotta do something about it and then the knight is getting captured. And at the end of the day, guess who is the loser? Three pieces against only two. So, yeah, let's not act like black is the loser here, please. <laughs> so... For well, that little reason that Queen B4 is the only resource that you need to watch out for, C5 is a better move. And you just get rid of the Queen and then uh, you have a pretty smooth sailing uh, to the win. Uh, hopefully at least if you don't lose your mind when opponent's King is on E7. So <laughs> please have a little bit of patience and uh, you should be able to uh, win these games eventually. So... All right, everybody, getting the white pieces, and uh, we're going to be going for a little classical uh, London system. And uh, against d5, I usually like to start with a knight for a number of reasons, and then do the bishop. So uh, the interesting part actually comes when they play c5. Okay, this is super weird. It happens, I would say, maybe one out of like 10 times in this rating range, so it's pretty rare, but I think the punishment of this line is actually quite uh, quite interesting. So on c5, uh, with this move, basically black is trying to get the game into some kind of Tarash territory, but I recommend we play an interesting sideline. The drawback of this is that the game is not going to be very typical for, let's say, the usual London system style. But I think it could just give you like a very quick win in less than 10 moves. So the idea is to go for pawn takes. Now, when they go e6, okay, black has a variety of moves. But normally, as long as uh, you can go e4 and they cannot take you with a knight, that is a good move. In this uh, specific structure after dc5, e4 is a very interesting pawn sacrifice. 
So here for black, it would be best to ignore this and uh, go bishop takes on c5. Now that would allow an isolated pawn on d5, which is kind of the point of this. But in case they take, this could be even worse for black. So let's see what uh, opponent has in mind here. I mean, knight f6 is a move too, I guess, but... Uh, oh, goes queen a5. All right. I wasn't necessarily expecting this. And I'll just try to walk you through my thinking process on how to deal with this sort of unexpected check. So if we play knight to c3, that would be usually a common move. Like for instance, if black would have gone queen a5 here, I know that knight c3 is the best, just putting more pressure on d5. Therefore, it's very natural for me to consider knight c3 as the main move here. However, after d e4, it is not very clear what we're supposed to do because we're unable to recapture because of the pin. So knight c3, we're kind of postponed that for a bit and I'm thinking whether we can go for a more aggressive move. So that would be something like either bishop d2, hitting the queen, then probably your opponent is going to go for queen takes on c5. Now... There is ed5 as a simple move that comes to mind. If they take with the pawn, they got the isolated pawn, so we're slightly better in the long run. And if they take with the queen, we have knight c3, and we have a little bit of a development advantage. So that is quite tempting. Another move that perhaps could be even better is c3. But that allows de4. That's kind of like the only interesting idea where... I think the point is to play b4. Intermediate move, hitting the queen, forcing queen back. And now we need to uh, take care of this knight with a move like maybe knight d4. I think that could be interesting. That could be objectively best. So I think I'm just going to go for it. Bishop d2 was reasonable, perhaps a bit easier if you had any doubts. Going bishop d2 cannot be a mistake, but I feel like this is even uh, a little more clever. Because we're threatening b4, setting up a trap, by the way. If he would have gone bishop takes on c5, that's losing a piece to the fork. So he takes as expected. If I just move the knight, we're dropping the pawn on c5. So let's not do that. Play b4 first, hitting the queen while uh, defending the pawn. And then, uh, yeah, we just want to move the knight. I was guessing queen c7. He could also play queen d8, but that would be really good for us because we're going to be able to just get a better endgame. So I do think opponent is going to play uh, this move. Now, what should we do? I think we're supposed to just stick with the knight d4 idea. We could also go knight d2, hit this pawn, perhaps trying to get it to c4 after. That could be, in fact, very clever, but d4 just looks a little bit more active for now. So if I play knight d4, I would expect a move such as knight f6. And then, I mean, I could go knight b5 if I want to be really aggressive. Queen to c6. Is there any way to refute that? I mean, there's like a bishop f4 kind of move, threatening to fork. He could go knight d5 in that position. Gets a little weird. I've got like 96 check among other things. I feel like 94 is the best. I'm just going to go for that because it's the most uh, central square and the most aggressive move as well. So yeah, just expecting knight f6. I don't think he's in time with a6. I mean, sure, that's a move, but it just feels like way too slow. I think black is supposed to just try to get in some development sooner or later. So for that, yeah, I would be expecting knight f6 mainly in this position, but we'll never know. Opponent has played uh, pretty surprising uh, so far and pretty quick. So he goes knight to c6. Now, the reason why I'm not like the biggest fan of the move knight c6 is that he's not uh, prioritizing castling. So what knight f6 was doing was preparing bishop e7 castle. If black can castle, they could get like a reasonable game. What knight c6 does, it's wasting a move without uh, getting closer to the main goal of castling. Now, 
Question is whether I have any way to punish this or not. So I would be tempted to consider the move knight b5 and just try to go for some kind of like sneaky ideas, knight c7, knight d6. Could also go bishop to b5. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I don't really see an immediate way to really punish this. Oh, I got a trap. <laughs> I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> this is gonna be super interesting. If we get this, guys, if we get this, th th this video is gonna blow up, I'm telling you. If we're able to pull off this trap, let's see if you can find it. I'm like hovering over the pawn, but it's not obvious yet. So I'm gonna go A4. And I'm hoping he plays this. I'm like really hoping he plays that move, stopping bishop b5. That's what everybody would do. Oh, he doesn't. Oh my god, I'll have to show that in the post-analysis game. That would have been so brilliant. Oh my. Okay. Fine. Alright, how do we do this? I'm just gonna go knight a3, preparing to jump with a knight. Knight e2 was the move too. Okay, he does it now, but it's no longer working that well. I'm just gonna have to play knight c4. Now the square has been weakened, so this could be a pretty cozy home for our knight. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be a very tricky for opponent to get rid of that piece. I could just go for it immediately, stopping knight e5 ideas as well. Has to move the rook. And then, if I could get the bishop over there, that would be pretty cool. But I think I'll just support the knight. Just making sure, uh, you know, the knight is. <laughs> the knight is having a good uh, stay on the b6 square. And yeah, I think I'm just going to play bishop e2. Bishop e3 was a thing as well. Now the question is, how do you guys recap here? There's a, b or c, b. But generally, it's AB, and we'll have a lot of ideas to sack the bishop in the in the future to just get a lot of protected pawns. Expecting now queen e5, and then I would just be going for the end game. Now, how do we force the end game there? That is the question. So, play them with queen d4, defending this pawn. While yeah, if he takes, I'm gonna be super happy. It's gonna be an insanely instructive endgame. I hope at least. <laughs> you guys bear with me. Um, problem is I don't have that much time left on the clock. We do get 5 seconds increment for those of you that are freaking out uh, about my time. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do this move. Hit the rook. So 5 seconds increment is decent. It's not a lot course but pretty decent better than no increment okay, let's just castle we're gonna let him take and improve our pawn structure no need to rush with that maybe we can take a little bit later i don't feel like this is running away so yeah still i'll have to remind myself to show you the trap that i wanted in the beginning that is like a crazy tactical motive that you can use in a lot of different variations so uh, okay opponent gives me the improved structure we'll take that now i want to play b5 next and the goal is to take here and remain with this two connected advanced past pawns yeah just going b5 taking advantage of the fact that this rook is pinned so expecting maybe like an a5 type of move but then the pawn becomes pretty lonely so, we're going to be able to win that, I think, slowly. Yeah, we could either go bishop d2 immediately, or I could double up the rooks with rook a4 and do that. Which one is better? Okay, I think, uh, yeah, might even just ignore that and play for c6. I think opponent at this point just has way too many problems to deal with. I, I don't know if you guys are like getting this, but we're about to get a new queen. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> if this was like an over the world game, I would be reaching for the queen. Just make sure it's nearby. 
because these forms are about to go pretty big. Okay, let's go B7, intermediate move, hitting the rook. Flattening to promote. Oh, that's a free rook, but... Yeah, I mean, we don't even have to take BC6 as a move as well, but... <laughs> okay, now let's just uh, move the bishop somewhere and... I don't think he's able to stop me from queening, which is pretty funny. <laughs> Told you guys the pawns are gonna promote. You never trusted me. How silly of you, I know. Oh, we might able might be even able to get a nice mating net. Hopefully I get to show that at least. I'm gonna be really mad if opponent does not allow me to go for the cute mating net. So let's see. He might just resign, but Yeah, I think it's like really nice uh, little magnet sacrifice that we're about to deliver. I mean, obviously, any move wins in this situation. So, of course, he's not going to allow me to do my goddamn job and show you the instructive win. But uh, it is what it is. Okay, bishop c6, so I think here it's just uh, time to get a queen. And then it's going to be a checkmate uh, on e7 or on c8. If you're weird, you do it on c8. So, <laughs> uh, here we go. So, yeah, okay, magnet sacrifice. First of all, when I said this, I was referring to, okay, assuming he goes like b4, I wanted to do something like queen. Now, let's see if you guys can find it. How does white win immediately after the move king d8? Of course, any move wins, but there is one little motive that just ends the game on the spot. And that is uh, rook c8, assuming you pause the video. Only move would be he cannot take this way because of the pin. He can take with the king. But then we go queen c7 checkmate. So it's magnet sacrifice because basically... We bring the king to c8, and then there's going to be like a checkmate idea on c7. So, that's the first thing. And now the more important one in the opening, I'm sure you guys remember. When I played a4, I said, wow, this is going to be so cool, blah, blah, blah. Because I was threatening bishop b5, and that's kind of obviously winning the queen. Which opponent uh, spotted and uh, decided to sidestep, but... Would have been pretty funny. Uh, oh, by the way, queen c7. I'm wondering why haven't I considered bishop to b5? That would have been pretty juicy with bishop d7, bishop f4 idea now that I'm thinking of it. Forcing queen c8 and then we get quick development. Anyways, don't worry about that. <laughs> so, I guess I was just mad that uh, we didn't get the trap and I didn't look for alternatives. But I guess knight a3 cannot be a bad move either. Uh, we'll check with a computer as well. But uh, the point is, we play a4. He goes a6. Stopping this, presumably. What do we do? Go for it anyways. That is ultimate Giga Chad Sigma rule. You go for it anyways. Plays a6. All right, fine. You do that, I do my bishop b5. What are you going to do about it? Because... If you take, we're going to have a pretty sticky situation in this position now that uh, both the rook and the queen are under under attack and white wins material. So if you are still kind of having any doubts, I don't know why would you, but plus five, is that good enough for you? I don't know. You let me know in the comments. So check it with the computer too. Bishop b5, first move. Yeah, by far. You can see it here. Boom, win. Thank me for that later. <laughs> Getting a new white game. Gonna be sticking with the, you know, our little uh, London system kind of thingy. And opponent plays the move B6. Now, the good thing about the London is, as long as they don't play aggressive, you can basically do the same thing anyways. But I do have to say, this move is wild. 
we're just gonna leave it as that. Uh, I have never seen such setup. If I play e3, I mean, sure, he's gonna take, and I'm gonna lose the right of castling, which I kind of have mixed feelings about. But uh, maybe we can just try to take advantage of that awkward bishop with a4. And you play a5. Another idea could be knight a3, knight b5, stopping that. So, yeah. What do you guys think? <laughs> uh, I'll just play knight f3. Just a useful uh, developing move. Oh my gosh. This is, this is something. <laughs> And okay, I think now it's just time to get a knight to b5 and then play e3. If we provoke c6, I think that's kind of like a nice little strategical achievement. Okay, I'll just do h3 maybe first. Have a square for the bishop to slide back. Yeah, after d5, this move is even stronger because on c6 now we have a fork. So he's basically either committed to take or playing bishop d6. So I'm not sure which one he'll decide to go for. If bishop d6, probably even taking with the bishop is an idea or just playing knight e5 actually. I like knight e5 in that position. So yeah, I don't know guys. This is just a very weird opening scenario. Who would expect b6, bishop a6? All right, I have to say, I've got to be ultra honest with you. That is not something that's mentioned in the course because I've never seen it before. But so far, we managed to, yeah, avoid this little problem with, uh, you know, the bishop a6 taking on f1 tension. And now we should just be able to get a normal game. So he plays c6. What are we going to do? Are we going to take and release the tension for no reason? Of course not. We're going to play e3 first. And if he takes, we're going to be happy to take with a bishop and gain a tempo. So you always want to be making these trades, but in your own terms, in like a little bit of an improved version. So, um, yeah, let's see. He does take, which is kind of proving what I just said. Uh, this is a typical mistake, by the way, for lower rated players. They always release the tension way too early for no particular reason. Now I've got a bunch of interesting candidates. What do you guys think uh, we should focus here as an idea? So, first of all, you cannot go wrong with castling. Okay, that's fine. Second of all... There is something concrete like bishop c6, rook c8 only move, and then bishop b7, that wins exchange. Yes, it's trapped. He cannot play rook b8, you bozo, because bishop covers that, so that's the London bishop, that's the hidden power of it. Okay, what else? Exchange, good enough. You can also play knight e5, ideas to infiltrate and have pressure. But I think we just keep it simple. Okay, for low rated games, I would just insist to keep it simple. Bishop c6, let's see what he has in mind to deal with this. So, you may be wondering, okay, how is this happening? Well, you won't even realize it, but after c6, the fact that we did not take, we just played the movie 3, that just won us the game. It's these little simple things that you think, okay, they don't really matter. They're actually, you know, game changer. You just win with this. Believe it or not, but look. Boom. Play bishop b7. He's going to play rook c7, of course, not noticing the fact that the bishop is there. And we just pick up free exchange. So, yeah, nothing fancy. I mean, he's got like one square on c4. Wow, he even finds it, but that's not going to be enough because how do we trap the rook? We've got a bunch of ideas to attack it, but... I feel like simplest is just moving the knight backwards. Guys, pro tip here. Forgot to give you a warning. This is top level GM secret. Knights do move backwards. So we do this and uh, the rook does not have any square that I could think of. Uh, simply because of e3. 
we were able to activate the bishops with tempo and really infiltrate behind uh, Black's lines, if that makes any sense. So, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty weird game, nonetheless. But the good thing about the London is that even if when they hit you with weird stuff like that, you've got so many waiting moves to improve your position. Uh, he does rook c7 like I called it earlier, but the point that I was trying to make is, uh, yeah, e3 is part of the plan, sure. But we've got so many other moves that are useful and we can play around this, like c3, knight f3, a3, a4, knight a3, bishop h2, uh, and then eventually push. It's not like a problem. You see it as a problem if you only think, oh, I need to play e3. If I don't play e3, I will die or something like that. So if you don't panic and you just keep in mind how flexible the London system is, you know, that is just uh, not a problem. This piece might just end up being very misplaced. So, okay. Back to our horses. He plays rook to c7. Just gonna take the free exchange and then my bishop is gonna be under attack. Now, we have a pretty interesting scenario, guys. So, do you think we should take or do you think we should just go back with the bishop? Which one is better? Or perhaps other moves. So... In case you go for rook takes on a7, that could definitely work, but I would say you should stop being such a, I don't know, gourmand uh, player, because dude, you, you already won the exchange, you won the game, what do you want more? It's like, I don't know, you just had a dessert and then you're like, oh. Let me get like a sugar coffee or stuff like that. Dude, you had enough. That's okay for a day. Just relax. Go back. Go bishop d3, castle, and, you know, win the game. Sure, in this position, rook takes to a7 is a winning move. But I'm just saying, he plays queen b8. If you don't see rook a8, that wins. Or queen a1 defending the rook, you could easily lose a piece. So... The main idea and the main point that I'm trying to make is, okay, rook a7 may be winning here, but in the long run, it could lose you a lot of games. So think about it this way. It's like, basically, you got a bag of Skittles, but, you know, eating one of them is going to get you killed. Are you going to take that risk? I guess not. <laughs> depends how, <laughs> uh, you know, depends how, uh, yeah, what's the word? I forgot the word. Um... Yeah, how greedy you are, but I guess not. So we'll just play bishop a6 and then, uh, yeah, get the bishop back home. Uh, can get castled. Yeah, let's just get castled. Cannot go wrong with that. And there he goes, queen c6. Now, what is the main uh, idea that we're using in these positions when we're ahead in material? So whether you're up a piece or a single pawn, the strategy remains the same. So the number one thing that is just going to make a tremendous difference in your win rate when you have winning positions is if you just go for the queen trade, that is going to basically eliminate uh, yeah, 80% of your opponent's potential counterplay. So we go queen a4, developing, offering queen trade. Now, if he's going to take, we're going to take back with the rook and... That is going to be an end game with an extra exchange, which should definitely be relatively easy to convert. Now, of course, for him, it would be better to <laughs> do something else, but instead he plays knight b8. Now, what do you guys think we should play? Oh, there is queen c6, and then we get rid of the queens. That has to be good. I mean, sure, it is, but in the same time, you want to, like, double check for blunders. They notice these things being on the same diagonal, and then uh, we can go for bishop to b5. And that is just, uh, you know, winning the full queen, and uh, with that, the game. So, just a little bit easier. Sure, trading was winning, but this is even uh, more convincing, I hope, at least. So, mm. opponent just resigns, and uh, we managed to cash in the game. Pretty weird opening, uh, I gotta say, 
sure, there is nothing wrong with playing e4 and going for this position, you're better. But I mean, you know, just as a London system player, we want to keep our, let's say, pieces and <laughs> not lose the right of castling. So, uh, yeah. So see here, you can take on c6. It's like, I don't know, plus one, but... If you play e3, he takes, you take with the bishop plus four. That's just the defense of playing e3 there and keeping the tension. So uh, with that being said, I think we can move on to the following game. <laughs>